How are we, people? Episode 37, Chat and Pony with Paddy the Baddy. You know the script, sponsored by Flux. Get over to the Instagram and the website, give it a little look. They've, uh, they've always supported the podcast, so I want to thank them as always. But today, I have my friend on. Ben, introduce yourself, lad. Hi, uh, I'm Ben. Um, play football for um, Paul Fail. Knew you for a good few years now, haven't yeah, I? From a while, lad. A while. Days, yeah, that? from back <laughs> in the day when we was younger, lad, being reprobates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the way you just said your first name then, lad. Oh, and I'm Ben. <laughs> His name's Ben Garrity. He's a heavy footy player. <laughs> Proper heavy, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's sick, lad, because obviously when, when we met, lad, I didn't even know that you had a game of footy. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because we were in Croatia, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, like, he was in Croatia, lad. He was like 19 or something, yeah. 20. I was younger, me, lad. I, I was well younger. I was only like 17 or something. But, was you? Yeah. It's <laughs> like, mate, you... Lovat, did you know Lovat? Yeah, yeah, we knew Danny. Yeah, so we met you over there, didn't we? We were with you most nights, but it's a good, good yeah, gaff battle. It was, a good, it was, it was a good little Aldi, lad. There's a lot of dodgy things in Croatia, like, but it was a good, it was a good little <laughs> yeah, Aldi. We had a, a good time. Place. But lad, as I say, at the time, I didn't even know that like you was good at footy because we never, I'd never seen you play. We'd never met, and then I can remember going to just with the lads, lad, going to watch a Brecht game. Yeah, and you yeah. were on. I was yeah. like. I went long after that, like I was after like, Brecht from when we went to Croatia. Lad, I was like, I know him. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They were like, shut up, Pad, you don't. Like, nah, that's Ben, lad. I was in Croatia with him, lad. I know him. You know what I mean? And then, like, obviously, seeing you play Sunday League, and like, you did just used to outshine everyone on there, like, you know what I mean? Good, though, with Sunday League in Liverpool. Yeah, lad, Sunday that's League in Liverpool is the best thing it. about it. But yeah, it went long after I seen you in Croatia. We were in um, a sham for Brecht. But like all your mates used to be there, like little Brooksy and all that. Yeah, like loads of you. So did, lad. that's probably how you've seen me there. But yeah, lads, been a been a mad journey. Like, but it's been good, lad. It's been good. Yeah, lad. Your type of journey is a proper homegrown talent type of journey, though. Yeah. Obviously, you know the person I'm gonna compare it to, don't you? Jamie Vardy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? He's the one that you've got to compare it to, isn't Yeah, it? he's just he's just obviously unreal in it, what yeah. he's done, lads. But, you know, that's what you're always aimed to do, in it? What he's done. He like, ended up becoming professional later than you as well, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He just kicked on so, so well, lad, and done unreal. Probably best journey ever, that, lads. What yeah. he's done in England and everything, know, was, Prem and everything, lads. He was on the bench for Leicester in the playoff final and all that when he got beat by Wofford. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> or the semis, sorry, the playoff madness, semis. Lads. Like, <laughs> it is crazy now, when you look back at that. Now he's just banging goals in every week in the Prem. He's one of the highest ever English goal scorers in the Prem, or yours, is he now? I don't know whether he is with Kane in it. Yeah, and Rooney He'll be well. up there, like... He's up there, like, definitely. He's scored over, like, 200 Premier League goals. Yeah, shot easy, him. lads. He's easy. scored major. Well, hopefully that's that's your journey, lad. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what you're aiming for, after, don't you, lad? That's what you're aiming for. But, you know, you just got to keep grounded, haven't you? And just keep grafting away, lad. Yeah, it's funny, lad, because I always ask people at the start, so how did you get into what you're doing when you can't really do that with a footy player? Because everyone wanted to be a footy player, Yeah, didn't yeah. I just always played it, lad, no matter what. Like, when you were saying there, when we were in Croatia, but I played them, but obviously just for me, like, sat in Sunday yeah. League. But, like, in that age, lad, you're going out low, so you don't really, like concentrate on kicking on or doing anything you just obviously want to kick on but it's tough to you know you need to be given an opportunity to go and do yeah. well and you know I got given it and probably coming through it like lower breath and Sunday league it just helps you massively like I would never I've always said that I'll never say to a kid like don't go into academy it's bad for you yeah because it's not because lads come out of there and they're technically unbelievable like the physical part of the game, you t- you can't. I don't think you get that coming through it in an academy unless you go out on loans when you're like 16, 17 into like yeah. the conference or league two if you're good enough and you know you get that physical side before you end up growing more at like 21, 22. But like coming through Sunday league lads when you're a kid, it's tough, man. Yeah, especially in Liverpool. So I think that 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 helps you physically massively, lad. As you know, lad. Stuff what the whistle gets blew for in like a, a, a professional game just doesn't happen in Sunday League. You no, know what I mean? Never like ever people lads. just get nailed and it's just like, yeah, play on. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> that's just normal. And, and, and that's it, what you need, lad. You need that bit of physicality, don't you, lad, to get used yeah, to it? Yeah, 100% too, lad. I'm not bothered what anyone says. Like, when you're playing Sunday League, you know you're getting smashed like yeah. at least twice a game. The way, like, now because I'm playing in a good level. Like, I'm never expecting to, like, turn and someone just absolutely lift me. The way, <laughs> Take like, it, like, three feet in the air. Yeah, the way I've been playing on the field by ours for the Easter. 
I know no matter what, if the ball's gone two seconds later, you're still getting wiped out yeah, at yeah. time. So like it does it does prep yourself, but you know, it weren't good getting whacked like when you were a younger kid, lad. <laughs> so when did you start playing for like the Breck when you were like 17? Um yeah, would Fucking have been, hell, you must have been very good at that age. 18. You know I mean? Nah, nah, actually, it would have been older for the Breck, actually. I'd say about 19 or something, 20. Yeah. Yeah. Because as you then. say, though, lad, people in them league defenders are like 44, and Yeah. You know what I mean? Just big fellas who've been playing their whole life who, they're not the best players, lad, but they know how to defend in a Sunday league game because they've been doing it for 20 years. And they don't want some young kid coming on and running Taking past the piss them, so they're just going to volley a lad no exactly. matter what. Lad, they've seen it plenty of times. Because the ref's just not going to blow. And when they do blow, lads, half of the line's fucking biting the edge <laughs> off on them, so it's heavy, innit? It's like Jobo, lad. Jobo gets kicked every week. Yeah, every like, because he's rapid, lad. Yeah, that's he just why. gets bollied in the ankles every week, lad. <laughs> be arsed with that, you know. I don't know, everyone, like, people say to me, oh, lad, you kick each other in the head and that. But, lad, I half know that that's coming, lad. You don't know that you're going to get nailed. Yeah. You're half doing the back of your head. You're half yeah. doing. But at the same time, you're like, yeah, we're just going for a game of footy when really you're getting fucking chopped in half by fully grown fellas. And as you yeah. say, you were 19. Oh, lad, I wasn't a man till about two years ago. Yeah, Literally, I went when I was playing then. You just had to take them, lad, because half of the players on my team would be giving it back to them. So you're thinking, yeah. I can't really moan about it. I just always think, me, like, if you're getting wiped out all the time, you must be doing something right. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not going to go and wipe some kids out who's proper crap. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> it's pointless. So you must be doing all right to not be getting wiped out every time. Yeah. So I just think, sounds, you know, take it as a compliment as much as it is annoying at times. But yeah. If you're getting wiped out, you're doing something right, aren't you? You're spot on there. Like, if people are letting the ball go past and kicking you instead, then you know full well they're worried about me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They know I can take this ball past them and fucking put it in the top bin of the net. But, lads, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't be into getting kicked in the head and that. Like, <laughs> the, I, you know what? I wouldn't be bothered about getting the head kicks. It's the shins, lads. You know, oh, classic yeah. shins, lads. The... When I used to jump over like a fence by ours and hit my shin on the fence. <laughs> That's the worst feeling ever, lads. So. But like, no, what everyone always says, no, like when, no, when someone kicks me and I check it, yeah, that doesn't hurt me. No, that hurts them. No, because they're the one putting the force into it, and I just stop it. When like you check a kick, it doesn't really hurt your shin. It hurts the other person. Haven't you ever like people roll the shins and that? Like, I don't know. How lad, people... I'm not from Thailand, lad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> lads we was born on the right side of the tracks so us lads <laughs> that, that uh, like all the the rolling pins on your shins and that it's meant like obviously it kills the nerve endings in your shin that's what it does yeah yeah it kills the nerves That'd in your shin I'd be sure that though like yeah. getting that done people who do that in, when they're 40 you've got arthritis in the shins have they yeah yeah know what I mean yeah that's like, not um, healthy that like I, I was saying it to Liam Madison the other week lad you see all ties kicking kicking trees yeah, I've but seen like, like the even, bamboo trees. Yeah, but he that. even said he was like, they're not proper bamboo trees. He was like, they're not as hard as you think they are. He oh. was like, and they they do kick that much though, lad. Them tie fighters, lad, they're about some of them. They start fighting from the age of six, seven, eight, and they're fighting every week. They're oh, the gosh. bread earner for the family from the age of nine. That's madness. You know what I mean? Because the dad's been fighting since he was a kid, all the way up into stadiums, and then he'll have a kid and he'll just train him. And what, they just stay in Thailand doing that most yeah. of the time? Most of the time, it's like, that's what I mean, they're fighting like once every week, once every two weeks in a stadium and that. You know what I mean? They're that's like At the age of like eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. It's cra- it is crazy, lad. That is crazy, lad. That. And then obviously when they get to when they get to like 18, they can start doing like bigger fights and like trying to travel and stuff like that. But yeah. they're happy just earning for the family because that is what they do, lad. The young kids there, they earn for the family. It is. Have, you never see like Thai, like Thai fighters in UFC though, do you? That's because they all do tie. Yeah. They all like in it's like an, an honourable thing in their country as well, lad. If you fight Muay Thai, know what yeah. I mean? MMA isn't the same in like them sorts of countries, yeah. Like they don't they don't look at it the same. There's so much honour there and like fighting Thai and fight, especially fighting in their stadiums in Thailand. There's never really any M- MMA events around there, know what I mean? Like yeah, you have to go to other countries and stuff like that around there to get fights in MMA. But yeah. like the, the reason you don't see as many Thai fighters either is because of the stance. The stance doesn't cross over well. Why? Because it just invites takedowns. Really? Yeah. Bit of you that then. That's what I mean. <laughs> just invites takedowns. It's the difference, lad. Boxing stance doesn't work. Muay Thai stance doesn't work. You have to mould them all together. I didn't know that, lad. It's like with footy, though, lad. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've got to mould all different stuff together to get yeah, the perfect take ons and then put it in the back of the net. Yeah, you do. You like your right, yeah. 
So how long was you playing like amateur footy for? All my life, lad, till um, 2020, lad. January, so how old? Just before years, COVID man? as well. Lad, yeah, COVID. So I signed like on deadline day for Blackpool from Warrington. and But I, I was only playing for Warrington for like 18 months because when I signed for Warrington, he wanted me to sign a contract. So once you sign, and I can't play Sunday League. Yeah. So I was gutted, lad, because I used to love Sunday League. Like, it was the best thing ever because I played it from like... Obviously, when I was a kid for kids' teams, but yeah. then with the Oyster, it's everyone from by man, lad. And like, all your mates who you all like playing mates. with. And you like, enjoy even it. the ones who don't play, lad, they're there every week watching you. We're going away on National Cup trips, lad. Buses full, lad. You're having a fucking laugh on the way home. Yeah. So, like, I was gutted to leave that. But then I just thought, if I'm going to have a go, I might as well just swerve it for two, three years. And if nothing comes of it, I can just go back to Sunday League whenever I want. So, Warrington, lads, 18 months or something. They're semi-pro, aren't they, Warrington? Yeah, yeah. Semi-pro, lads, it, yeah. It's a good standard there. We, first season, lad, we were unlucky. We got in, the, um, got in the playoffs, lads. Won the playoff final. But that year, there was like a, um, a rearrangement for the league above. So, they had to do like a super playoff final. So, we had to play the winners out of the Southern Division in the super playoff final. Because we got like more points than them in the league, we got the home tie. So we were thinking, oh, we've got this year. Lad, they beat us 2 1, man. They were decent to be fair. Kings Lynn, I don't know what it, I think they're still in the conference. I've heard, I've heard that team. I don't think they went Lynn, up and then went team. up again, but it's, actually, I don't think they're in the conference. They might be in a conference north, I'm not sure. But, yeah, because they have a north and a south conference, don't they? Yeah. And then a proper conference. But that's what that. I didn't get, lad, because we were playing to go into the, conf- the no- conference north. Yeah. So I don't know why we were playing someone out the south because they would have just went into the. Actually, they went into the north, I think. I can't remember, but. Just didn't make sense that year, but we were unlucky not to go up lad that season. And then obviously the new season started, and I done well. Lad, I scored like 10, 11 goals up to January. I was just scoring every week. I was thinking, well, yeah, this is mad because I didn't score that many the year before. And then um, literally, lad, the last day I was in work, and my manager from uh, in Warrington just you ran were in me. work. Yeah, I was in work, lad. I swear. <laughs> Doing what? Working on the machines, lad. I was just remembering it. it was an horrible job. I, was, I still I speak to my mate, like my mates from work now. Tom and George and I was I seen Tom the other day and he was like, Ah oh, lad, just remember you do these things on this machine like called kingpins and are the worst things to do you in like a tight space, lad, just whacking an hammer like with a little long pole thing, you're just trying to knock it out, but they're all rusty and seized and that. So lads, it's like gone from he was saying like you've gone from doing that that day to the next day going to do your medical and then going into professional footy. I was like, I know it's mad. He's like, at least you won't have to do them ever again, lad. They're that's the worst things ever. Sick that, you know, lad, that's but at first story, I was man. like, my manager, what am I going to say to me, me boss and that? And he was just like... Um, you signing a professional contract, <laughs> lad. But I had to go and do a medical because so we didn't want to go like, hard I'm leaving and just get off and leave. So I was like, look, I've, I've got to go and do a medical. They were like, ah, whatever. I was like, nah, I'm being serious and that. Like, I've, <laughs> they thing. thought you were taking the piss just to get off early. Yeah, he was thinking like, he's just taking the piss here. But I've done it before where I was meant to be guys going meet and say a, a manager or a head of recruitment at another club and I've got off and it didn't end up happening. And they thought, oh, he's just doing so this again. I was thinking, oh, these might think I'm blagging. I was like, nah, honestly, look, and I had to show them and that. And he was, they were made up for me, obviously. And they were like, yeah, do whatever. And let us know. So... When I went and done my medical and that, it took hours to do, lads. No, what I was just about to ask you, lad, what does a medical consist of, Ben? Because, so, lad, when you hear a player's failing in a medical, you're like, what? Yeah, Failing a medical, yeah. how's that possible? You're a pro player. Because you're just testing, like, your, body, your whole body, lad, because at the end of the day, you're, you've got to think... They're of, paying for... their business, yes, in it, lad. So, like, imagine paying someone... Pff, imagine signing someone for Liverpool, like, that Nunes is just signed. Like, you're paying him whatever they're paying him a week, lad, and you spring him in, and he don't do the medical properly, and then... Two months He's in, lads, when the game's are a bit tough something. and his knees yeah. completely done in. And they're thinking, like, what, what are they going to do here? So it's like, man, man might have been different to others. I reckon people who've probably been Had in and around before. the game for yeah. years and years, they'll just have, like, past records of, like, oh, he's got a bad ankle, he's got a bad heart or anything, because yeah. a lot of it's now, to, it'll be even worse now, I'm guessing, because yeah, of the definitely. heart stuff. Like, I end, I got, like, th- two or three heart scans, me and that. Have ever been to Manchester Institute? The MIP? Nah. Right next to City's... I think they built it, lads. I'm not too sure, but they probably did the money they've got. Yeah, lads. Therefore, it's it's proper heavy in there and it's empty all the time. So I went there to do it, lads. But it took absolutely hours to do, and like they just done like scans on your your whole body, lads. In an MRI, you know, doing your yeah. whole body scan for like 
was in that for a bar an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, you do. You're like, it's horrible when they say lying down. Like, I'm, that, that's this is how much of a weirdo I am, Ben. <laughs> I fall asleep in them. How, lads? Just, lads. The noisiest thing ever, lads. The noisiest, ever, but don't they, have they ever give you like a pair of headphones? Yeah, but it's a it proper And the raid, lad, lad, when greatest hits is on, lad. <laughs> oh, what a <laughs> night. You know what I mean? Just sitting there like this. No shit. way, I lads. got moaned that a few times because I fell asleep and, lad, where I was like that asleep. And when you're just like moving, you sleep. Yeah, yeah. I got shouted that a few times. That's like, why I moving. don't think I'd try and go to sleep because I, I know I'd be moving, do you know what I mean? I, lad, when I'm just lying there, that and I get tired, that's it, lad. Lights out. Swear. No way, that I is just mad. Fall, like, I just fall asleep. Enough them lad. headphones, lads. Yeah, I know what you mean. You can still hear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you lad. It's annoying, but at the same time, lad, when I'm just lying there and all comfy, lad, I just fall asleep. No, nah, we, we're that. like that. We've got to get an MRI every year or something do like you, that. Yeah. yeah. What like whole body stuff? Brain, lad. Brain, yeah. Make sure that you're uh, yeah, you're getting punched, aren't you? Make sure that you haven't got no spots on your brain or not. I know what I mean. So we have yeah. to get one every twelve months. That's if you've got mad, a fight lads. coming up, no that's what I mean. it, so I reckon. Pe- as I say, lad, people's would be different, but like, mom has just done like loads of art stuff and then scans in your body to make sure all your ni- ligaments, everything's fine. And then basically, like, the physio will just do a um, little test that you like, just check like your mobility of like yeah. your knees, your ankles, everything, like, do like little tests with you. But obviously, I reckon most of the time people are past them unless they've got like previous stuff going yeah. on, and then. Normally, lad, you'll do that in the same day as what you're going to do. Go to the club and do a running test and do your fitness thing. And, like, they don't fa- you won't fail on the running test. You'll just go down as, like, poor or good or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So, like, that that's that's different. People won't fail off. Oh, Because I I was flapping me. I was thinking, oh, save them, don't do good enough when we're running. He might not try me. But then I don't think it'd matter because they can just build your fitness up anyway. Yeah. Like, it's different. But you'll do, like, all, like, single leg stuff and, like, loads of like plyo stuff and, and explosive stuff and yeah, things like, like that and like your range and squatting and that like no weight it's just all body weight but you'll do loads of like little movements with like the sports scientists at the club and then pretty much done then lad that, that's mad. fascinating you know i've always wondered what an actual medical consists of who was it that failed the medical at Liverpool a few years ago was remy. Remy, yeah, remy from qpr I'm, I'm as well. that was that's the one i'm thinking of for kia for kia yeah. didn't he he was he, his was something to do with his knee or something yeah. like that and they're just lads, especially Liverpool, they're just like, they don't want to waste that one, not. And just like, yeah, see you later. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? They should have done that with Aquilani years ago. Fucking <laughs> oh, hell, I remember him. Remember that Italian crab? Lad, he Jesus. looked heavy when he signed, now, and you watched his clips and yeah. on YouTube, you're like, wow, he's good, him. But yeah. lad, he was bad, he? Yeah, he was poor, like, lad. He was poor. <laughs> so, lad, what was it like walking in in your first day as a professional on a new team? Was it, is it mad? It's, I mean? it's scary, lad, because... That's what I mean. I was thinking, like, obviously, it'd be a bit nerve like they're, not, they're not massive names, like, in, in Prem and that, but, like, they've play, loads of them have played at, like, good levels. You had, like, like Speedham was in there. You had Gary Medine, who's played at a good level. You had um, Sean Scannell, the one who played, like, other people. Like, they're not massive names, but, like, you're thinking, like, they've been, they're, there, they're been there and, like, played at a good level for forever, lad, and I'm just coming in from non-league. I'm thinking proper nervous in my first session, but lad, the first day of training, like when when you go to Blackpool, you'll go in like the stadium, get changed in that day, go and do like your activation stuff, get warmed up, whatever, have your food, your brekkie and that at the stadium. But then you drive, it's changed now, everything's at the training ground, but you drive from the ground round to the stadium and round to the training ground and it's like Squires right by the um, the airport in Blackpool. Yeah. So, Normally, people are just jumping in each other's cars, but like I went like speaking to yeah, someone you, you properly. Yeah, you wasn't pally enough to go, mm, hey, can I jump in yeah, there? But I didn't know. People were just like, yeah, and I was just like, yeah, Squires, as if I knew, and I was thinking, I haven't got a clue. So I was just getting up on my phone like Squiregate and looking at it, and I was thinking, you reckon you can take your phone round with you? So, lads, I left my phone at the stadium in my bag and got in my car and drove around to there, but I couldn't find it. So like I'm just driving around Blackpool thinking, where is this place, Squires Gate? <laughs> Not knowing where I'm going, but I was following a white mech for a bar. And like the all the lads said to me, nah, it's only like five, ten minutes around the corner. So I was like, oh sounds. I was just thinking white mech, it was like on a new place, probably be one of the lads this. So I'm just following this white mech and it looked like it had four people in. So I'm thinking, like, where's he going this this car here? So like when it's got to like a two lanes. I just pulled to the side and looked in and it was just a family. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. I've been, where am I? I've been following these for like 15 minutes thinking, where are these going here? 
So anyway, I'm driving around trying to spot like a training pitch. So I'll fly back to the stadium. Don't know why I didn't go in and get my phone, but I went in the stadium, went into the reception and was like, where's the training ground? It's my first day. I haven't got a clue where it is. She was like, right by the airport, go out, do a left, go down. You'll, you'll see the airport. It's right next to it. So I drive all the way down, get her on the road, but like with the training ground, so I'll save that's the main road. You do a left by like the Aldi or something and then a right into like an house estate and then yeah. a left and it's right set to the back. So it is hard to find if you haven't got your phone. So I'm just looking and thinking, I can't even see a pitch here. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm in a council estate. What's going on here? <laughs> that's what it was. I was just, it was just driving around streets and I'm thinking, oh, I need to. So I drove back to the stadium again. Got your phone. Got me phone. Like, I had missed calls off him. Ducky was the, like the assistant with Grayson at the time. I had messages and I'm thinking, oh my God, that's it. Fair, fucked it here. First day and I've done this. So I rang him and went, oh, I'm sorry. And then he was just laughing. He was going, where are you? I said, well, I'm back at the stadium now. I don't know where it is. Even I'll send you my location now. So I was done that. I sort of flew around, lad, like going through reds and everything, <laughs> panicking, Picking shit, sweating, lad. Day. That's what I was sweating, lad. I was panicking. <laughs> so I get there, lad, and they're all they've finished the warm up and everything. They're like going into like a possession or something like that. Lad, I just get there and like everyone's clapping, clapping laughing, 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 laughing. And a bit of an icebreaker. Not that I wanted it, but they were just laughing and that. And then I just done a warm up and like that session went sound. And after that, it was it was good. Like it, like. People at the club help you loads, lads. Like the players in that day, when I went in, like done so much for you. Like speeding the first day, lads. Come over, like introduced themselves to me, showed me like around, showed me where to get my kit, what to do with my kit after it, where we have food, you know what I mean? Like he made you feel a bit more settled, lad. And like when I went upstairs to do stretching, you come over, put his mat next to you and start I, I've talking. I've met you, he's a proper nice fella. Sound, you, lad. Proper sound, like, lad. That's what you need. Like, I've heard little Elliot Nevitt say it as well. He said the same. Yeah, he's a Tommy, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's a Tommy, yeah. Like, he said the same when he went into, I spoke to him about Jay and he said when he went in, he was the exact same. And like, it took him under his wing. Yeah, and just like got him, him settled, do you know what I mean? Because it is nervous going into like a, fo a football team, especially I went in in January, lad, so it's not like, when you go in pre-season now, everyone just bonding and like, you might go on little, like an away, we're going to Marbella, so we'll go and train, but then we'll probably have like a little day out together and then the new lads are settling a bit more. Yeah, everyone gets to know each other yeah. like, outside well, of just being on the pitch. Well, you're going in January, lads, you're halfway through a season, so it's tough. I have always think it'll be tough going into a club in January. So like, especially me, I haven't come from a club, so they're probably thinking, ah, who's this kid? He is non-league, he's probably shite yeah. <laughs> so that's always what was going through my head just not making mistakes and that in that first session I'd actually done well that day and then as I say from then lad, it was good I, I liked it there to be honest because the lads were sound with me lads especially like some of them have as I say played at a good level so it was, it was scary though it's horrible going in your first day it's lad, the boss thing about that as well it's close to home isn't it yeah, it's only lad, Blackpool it's not that far it's not that far and it, it's not too bad like traffic wise you don't get many people going up north do you yeah everyone's coming down south lad yeah you're right there like i know what you mean though some people say that coming into our gym some well, people like say the same at you it's like the way you go in somewhere and you're going to new clubs and that and the going in and you're training with them like how do you feel like going into like new gyms i know what you mean you when you've been in america and you're go, going there going in another like well, lad, that gym in America, lad, 540 is the most friendliest gym. Is up there with my gym, about really, friendly yeah. it is. Know what I mean? Like, the, 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 that's that's the type of gym where it's like any problems you've got outside doesn't matter on this mat. You're on this mat. Yeah, End of. Yeah. They don't like. There's no gym politics in there. Anyone can go and train there. No one's like the owners, like Jake and Aaron, are just the two of the coolest dudes ever, lad. But I, I know what you mean, lad. People say coming into our gym, oh, I didn't know what you'd be like, lad. People say that to me. It's because oh. the way you are, probably the way you are, lad, when you're getting ready for fights and you're doing interviews and you're buzzing off people and that, they're probably thinking, oh, he's going to come in here all loud and that. But then realistically, lad, once you're in there, you're in there to work, lad. Aren't exactly. You? And you're in there to help each other. Yeah, you know 100%. What I mean? lad. Like we have lads coming down from like Manchester and um, Preston and that to spar with us now. Like Do most you, yeah. days, you know what I mean? They come down the same with us most mornings, lad. Sam Spencer and then uh, Menga's gym and stuff like that, lad. And they're all they're all boss lads, lad, you know what I mean? And the, we all mould together now. Everyone's like everyone's in there together with each other. Yeah. You need a good environment. So that's why I think like us did where I am now. Like I'm not saying the other club the other clubs are I was good, but because I've probably been here for a good year and we've done well. The environment at where we are, lads, unreal. Like the whole, the staff and everything. Like everyone's so helpful, lad. Just wants to, everyone wants to do well. They just want to go, to just keep growing yeah, keep and growing, lads. As a club, do you know what I mean? No matter how long it takes them, like they haven't got like 
we want to be here in two, three years. They just want to just keep trying to push the club and grow us as players. Yeah. So it's boss there, lads. I and love reach it. new heights like yeah, you've never done before. Lads. But like, did you, did you didn't get much game time at Blackpool, did you? Nah, because I just... I mean, so, didn't really... I, I signed, lad, on the deadline day. And then... Um, I played about three games and covered it. Nah, lad, I didn't. We played bounce. So, like, you have bounce games, you know, where the lads who aren't playing in that. Yeah. Like, they'll, they'll have games to top the game time up. Maybe like a few U team players will play as well. Yeah. Where they might be sort of pushing to go into the first team. But because I signed quite a lot in that January, like Grayson signed loads of players. So there was like a good few first team players. And we had like, I think I signed, say it was on a Friday, and we had that week of training, Monday, Tuesday. I think we had a game like against Crew on like the Thursday. So obviously I was shit myself then thing and my first game here and, and lad we got there and the pitch was awful and like <laughs> obviously it, it, it weren't that bad for me because I've gone from playing on the field by ours like, yeah. which is crap to playing like we were at Crew Academy and it was just it was pissing down a day it was dead boggy and that Proper and all the lads were like oh, I don't want to play and I was just thinking nah it's a game like I was buzzing some of them yeah. probably looking at it thinking oh, hell, could get injured I'm not used don't to playing risk on it. shit like this like, it was just normal for me so that was my first one and then um, not long after I signed, lad, Grayson got sacked. So I was thinking, fucking hell, he's brought me in. Yeah, he's the one who's brought me in. He's brought me in and he's he's been sacked. Like, what's going to happen with me now? But like, that's what I say about footy. People think like, oh, it's, 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 like it is, it's boss, lad. But it can just change like that. Like a gaffer could bring you in. And like, I don't know, say two, three weeks go by, lad, he's lost every single game. The pressure's on the gaffer then. And like, if he goes, lad, and a new gaffer comes in, and you don't know where you stand. That gaffer might not be having you. And you might have just signed a two, three years deal, you lad. So you you might be stuck there for three years. And not if that, getting played, if that not gaffer does no well, time. obviously you can't sulk. You've just got to keep grafting away and hope that the gaffer takes a liking to you. But it's not always plain sailing footy. Like I always think I've never been in that position where they've never took a liking because I haven't been in it long enough. When you speak to lads and have told me stories, I'm just like, damn stories, I'm mad. Like, I'll be losing my head and I don't know how you'd be settled. I've had long on this. Chris, yeah, Christopher yeah, Lang. he's been in the for ages, lad. And lad, he said the, the same with Burnley. He said he got signed and he said Sean Dyke just didn't like me. Because I mean, he turned lad. up in a Range Rover, he said. He turned up in a Range Rover and like, he was getting paid, lad. He can get whatever car he fucking wants. Do whatever he wants exactly. with his own money, lad. But like he said, like, when he walked in, he said the first day, he said to me, oh yeah, you need to get rid of that car. So Dyke said to him, that's why I hate Sean Dyke. Made up, he got sacked. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he what's it called? The kind long, he was just like, what? You know what I mean? I think that was the season he got promoted as well. That and like he just didn't, that. he didn't know what, like he, his head was chocking on me. He didn't, he, he talked about it on this lad. He didn't know. He was like, what do you mean? Lad? I've, I've, I've paid for this car. Why can't I have a car? And like, they were all on his case. You know what I mean? You know, they were like all older pros and that. that. It's, lads, it's still like that now though. Like some lads, obviously, probably like, I'm not saying I'm old, but like lads who be younger than me now just love like, the Co image spend, yeah clothes and that and yeah. spending a fortune on clothes and like I used to like buying nice clothes and stuff but like now when you're trying to sort like an house and stuff and paying for other things and you're wanting to do like nice things instead of spending your money on clothes you like realise now but I'd never say to a kid like what are you doing buying them yeah do you know what I mean I'd say like you should think about not like not doing it but if you want to do it I've got a big massive mouth lad I'd probably say to him what the fuck are you doing by <laughs> if the bad shoes yeah you'd be on yeah, them yeah I can't help lad if like, someone... I don't understand that when people go out and spend like 500 pound on a top it's lad, a t-shirt lad it's material yeah I know that costs about 3 pound or something yeah yeah like, and you're paying 500 quid for it well lad that's why I just like getting plain tops now I used to be this like not 500 quid but like you go out and I go out and wait, go and buy a lamb and top on a Friday and you go out on a Saturday, you won't wear it again because you've wore it once. Yeah, you can't wear, wear it for another I'm, three months or something. I'm working, lads, and I'm not even earning good money, yeah. lads, and I'm, I'm blowing me money and then I'm going out and blowing a fortune and that's it, lad. You're eating pot of noodles for the rest of the week. <laughs> noodles. <laughs> Isn't it? Like, it's, it's, it's mad. People... On the coca noodles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what a shout. But, lad, that's even worse in our city, I think. Oh, it's proper it's bad. It's bad, lad. Yeah. People get, like, skittered for not wearing, like... Stuff. Like, I don't give a fuck anymore, me, lad. I'll wear what I want. You know what I mean? Lad, you, you shouldn't be asked. No, what no you one wear. should, but when we're younger, as yeah. you say, do you look at younger players I was now? The same, yeah, we were all like that for, for a little bit. But that's why, like, even, like, lads still be saying, I don't know, they're getting a new card and he might talk and I go, oh, what are you getting? 
And like the older pros would be like, oh, what are you doing getting that? And I'm just thinking like, leave him to it. Like if you want to get out yeah. I like cars, me lad. Like if I, you know, if I had a good amount of money, I'd love to go and get a top car lad, like an unreal car. But I mean- Gotta like, live on your means. Yeah, the, but these pros would be on them when they're just getting like- The first ever contract. Yeah, and getting a, a decent car or something. And I'm just thinking, just leave them to it. You know, if they want to waste the money, that's their problem. It's got nothing to do with you, what they do with the money. But- if someone would come at me though, like the way Long you were saying, none of these signs somewhere in the gaff is saying to him, like, get rid of that. You'd just be like, why? Like, I know. What's it got what's to do with What's that got to do with me on the pitch playing? You know what I mean? It's got it's, nothing to do with it. I've definitely heard a story about that somewhere. You know what it might have been? Someone turning up like a rose You know who told me a funny story about that? What about, lad, the De- Deli Ali last year? Yeah. That was yeah. what that was. People were slating him on the radio, weren't they? Saying, yeah. oh, he's turned up in a Rolls Royce. So what? Yeah. If that's the car he's bought and paid for, that's the car he's bought and yeah. paid for. I agree, lads. Massively. Like, I didn't, our old them last year was speaking to him. Um, remember Dave Wheatley used to play for like Butter and that yeah. centre half. He was telling me when he was at Bolton, I don't know whether they were in the champ and he got relegated to League One. And obviously he was on top money at Bolton. Yeah. And he went and bought a Ferrari. Just when he got relegated, do you know what I mean? And I don't know whether he was getting like hammered and that. He would have got <laughs> hammered. But he's not. He's that. not like he's not flashy. Not like he'll, he used to. T- he'll turn up into footy. Bear in mind, he's probably a millionaire. Yeah. To footy and like Reebok and that, like he's not asked at all. He doesn't care about the image or anything. But he just he likes fancy cat. eating himself. And he just went and bought a Ferrari after they got relegated. Yeah, lads. He- I he's not like, him, lad. You're a brave man, you are. Lad, if that happened in Liverpool, them Ferrari windows would be getting smashed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd be getting sucked right off, my reckon. Oh, lad, I still can't even drive, can I? Can't you? Uh-huh. You're mad, you lad. What <laughs> are you doing? Can't drive. You're bear driving everywhere. Yeah. Uh, lad, I just, I've, I've done a few lessons, lad, two hour ones as well, lad. I've done about six, seven, eight, two hour ones, lad. And I can drive and automatic. Yeah. But I've just, like, I was doing them just before COVID it. Oh. Covid it lad and just stop doing them. Wouldn't you, know you just mean? do the auto testing and just that's get what, an Yeah, auto? that's what I'm gonna do, lad. Yeah. Every car's gonna be automatic in five years anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you might as well. But what what was it like for a footy player then when COVID did it? Oh, it was mad for me, lad, because as that's when Grayson got sacked, didn't he? And then like an incident Dunny, David Dunny come in in January with not with me, but like Grayson brought him in to be a coach. He ended up taking over. But he like he half liked me and he used to say to me like, look, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing well. And that like when we had the bounce games, I'll be playing well. And I think um, Critchley ends up coming in then. And he went, um, we played Uddersfield. He got, I think he come in on a Tuesday and we were playing Uddersfield in a bounce game on a Wednesday. And um, they battered us to be honest, but I actually done all right. Like it was just, I think probably just like using me mouth quite a lot as well. Like speaking, I think he probably liked it and he just, pulled me after the game and was chatting to me and just said like you're doing well there just don't lose your head blah blah um and then we went back in lads and we had i think we had fleetwood on the Saturday, and he put me on the bench and i was thinking ah decent i'm getting around the squad and that now and then we had trammy at home on the i don't know it was a tuesday night or it might have been a Saturday after and i was on the bench again there and i was i was hope i was thinking i don't know why i was just thinking that game when i get on here i think they end up be, they beat blackpool 2-0 or something like that um, I was thinking I'm definitely going to get on here the game's done here but it didn't end up getting on and then Col- we had, I think we had Sunderland away that Saturday lad and the COVID, I was thinking oh, I'll be heavy going there Covid it lad it was just mad at first because no one knew what was going to go on whether the season was going to get cancelled yeah. what we had to do but you couldn't go anywhere or do anything so lad I was just doing runs every day doing like little weight circuits in my back garden lad probably eat eating like so good lad just thinking I was going to be back yeah but then obviously sooner rather than later once the season just packed in lads everyone probably just settled down a bit but I was still doing quite a lot of running because I didn't play any games I didn't I, I probably hadn't played a game for time so for the lower leagues did the seasons just stop in our well league one stopped under and obviously higher the seasons got swerved well except the prem and that, that's what i mean we? yeah to push the prem carry yeah, on we got, league one got stopped i think league two did as well I'm not sure about the champ i can't remember that season i can't that's what i mean I, league one and two defo got stopped like because like I, I don't think they might just stop the championship you know why that there's money in it yeah television. 100%, you know I mean? it's champ money, and the prem that's yeah. the two best leagues in it but yeah just they just got swerved and then 
It's just one of them. You just wait till the new season. But so how did you end up moving them from Blackpool? Oh, for like on loan. Yeah, like yeah. If, if obviously the fucking COVID that, it and all that. That's what then... was mad because I when when we went back to pre season. We went back quite early because Critchley obviously only just come in just before. Just club. before. So he wanted one. to sort of get his way of playing or anything into the club. So we end up going back like two weeks earlier than everyone else. But at the time, probably the fittest I've ever been because... You were you doing could, all them runs and all them just circuits. doing runs every day, lad, because it's the only time you could go out really. And then, lad, I, I know what you mean there because I never used to run me, lad. I never yeah. used to run at all. And you love biking, don't you? Yeah, like, but COVID got me running. Yeah. There was nothing else to Everyone do. Everyone was just doing yeah. like 5Ks. Yeah, there was empty. nothing else to do, lad. So it was just like, oh, I got a punch bag put up in the garden and started fucking jogging every day. Yeah. that's the, the, I, I think everyone probably being the best time ever was in COVID because the only way you could go out, lad, was going to do yeah. runs, wasn't it? <laughs> it's a belt and excuse to get out the house that like, <laughs> oh, I'm running, lads. Yeah, man. <laughs> we used the bikes as well, lad. We pedaled to Southport one day. I'll never forget it. We got to this beach and this woman come over to us, a busy woman, and was like, oh, what's happening? She must have heard us talk. Like, what's happening? I was like, oh, I was just on a bike ride. She was like, you're only meant to be here within like a 10 mile radius of your own house. And we were just like, oh yeah, see you later, girl. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back now. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> yeah, we done it. I didn't go to, like the lads from by ours went up to like Southport and had on a bike a few times, but I didn't really go out much on a bike. So we were just going to like Crocky Park and just yeah. sitting in Crocky Park. And, uh, I um, seen Avi Elliott jogging through Crocky Park a few times when I was here. Did you? Or yeah. Sefton, one or the other. When we were out on the bikes, only we would just go yeah, to the yeah. park on the bikes. You'd see him jogging around there. That was, as, as you say, with the running, like, that was just a nice excuse to get out and go out with people, weren't it? Like, yeah. Because you weren't seeing anyone. So that was the best I ever felt after lockdown, lad. But yeah, when I went back in, we were flying. I was thinking, well, yeah, I might get a chance this season. But obviously, we were signing loads of players, and I was thinking, they were good players, to be fair, lad. Training was boss, lads. It was proper good. I was enjoying it. And then, um, like, I remember speaking, I think it was to my agent, and he was saying, like, oh, I've spoke to, like, this this fella, Ben Manfred, who I think he was, like, he's, like, basically runs Blackpool. He was saying, like, oh, I'm doing well, and they're surprised with me, blah, blah. So I was thinking, I was yeah, I'm in a good, good position to be going in here. Getting and, in the start 11 yeah, on that soon. And um, I remember we were doing, like, 11 v 11. And um, he was just bombing me into like right back and that. So I was I was thinking, I'll just, I won't moan or not. And I'm not bothered with man playing right back. It'd be decent. But I, I wanted to play centre mid. Yeah. But I, I was playing centre mid. And then when these lads were coming in, who we'd signed, they were going in centre mid. And I was going right back. But it was mad because a right back who, like, he weren't obviously normally starting. He was just standing on the side of the pitch watching. And I'm thinking, it's mad this. This kid's not even getting on here. And yeah. I'm going right and back. And this is his natural position. Yeah. So oh, I just went to, um, I remember just after like two or three of them, like over a week or something, I just went up to him after the game and just said, after one of the 11 v 11s and said, what's going on with me this season? Are you looking at me as a right back or do you see me as a centre mid? And he was like, no, we see it as a number eight, box to box. Um, but you know, there's people who are ahead of you. And I was like, that's fine. You know, as long as you're honest with me, what, what do you think's best then? Because I've got a year left. I need to play games this season because obviously COVID killed me the season before. Yeah. And he went, um, well, I've been speaking to Ben and your agents and they, they think that a loan deal will probably be good for you. So I was like, sounds, um, no, at least I know where I'm at now. Yeah. Just as so, soon as I got in my car, rang the agent lad and to be fair to my agent, he literally saw to me like that, said Alderman after the midfielder. But they, obviously they want to see you playing. Harry Kuehl was the gaffer there. Yeah. So... Harry Kuehl, yeah. Blast yeah. from the past, that mate. <laughs> Jesus. Man. Remember him just faking injury, lad, in yeah. the Istanbul and coming off, lad, when we were 3-0 down. <laughs> so he was there, lad, and we just went in, played two games for them and, like, trained for two weeks. But but all the, like, the owners at Oldham were just a bit mad, lad. So he was just um and ah and about signing me and didn't know what to do. But I'd done well in the games. We played Forest, yeah. lad. We absolutely battled Forest in a in one a pre-season game we just played a non-league team as well and um, I was thinking I've done well in these games here and they, obviously Harry Kuehl was saying to me like, I want I want you to sign I said but I've just got to try and sort with the owners so Critchley half like spat his dummy out and was saying you aren't just having him there training if you want to sign him you can sign him he's coming back with us lads I must have went back to Blackpool for like a day or two 
and then the deal got sorted then and I went on loan for the season at Oldham. That um, was obviously what they needed then when it kicked up the ass to actually sign Yeah, it. 100% lad, like, because they were just, I was literally just training and playing games for them, but in my head I'm thinking, is this deal going to get sorted yeah. or what? Like, what's going on here? Or am I just wasting my time? Yeah, yeah that's, well, that's what Critchley thought was going on. He thought, is he just getting in for numbers because... I need numbers as well to yeah. be training and you know you're, you're signed to us and you will get minutes but I can't promise that you'll be playing much which was fair enough lad he was honest with me at the time and he was bringing players in he probably on good money and he was good players so Oldham move was good for me to learn and see what it was about a full season in professional footy but it was just mad lad because there's no fans or nothing like you're just playing training games and that lad so that, that must have exactly what they must have felt like. It was. That I've compared fighting behind closed doors to a sparring session. It's mad, lads. Like, like it's, it's not like it's, you're in a, it's not like you're in an actual game, like no. a fight, is it? Know no what I mean? Way. It's just not the same. And like when you score, lad, or you, you're winning or whatever, it's like... You don't get that little feeling in your nah, stomach when people celebrate. Fans and stuff, lad, and everyone's buzzing and you're just thinking, it's just dead in here. Like <laughs> it was, lads. It was just one game we had, lad, where we played Cambridge away. And I think it was when COVID settled down a bit. They must have let like 2,000 fans in the stadium, but he had to be separated. And I was thinking, this is decent, do you know what I mean? And it was it was good to like see that side of it. And we were classed that day, lads. We battered them. They'd done that for like the last two games of the season, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Because they'd done they a bit of few... Yeah. Like, they just let, do it in Anfield and that. Yeah. Just spread them out. They let, yeah, I think what they'd done there was the last two games of the season, you had a home and away fixture. So they'd done the last two games of the season not to see what it was like. Yeah. But then the next season, we just come back as normal, normal didn't we? Normal, lads, yeah. That's what I'm saying. You just gotta live with it, haven't you? Lads? It's just some sort of flu, ain't it? But obviously, at first, it was it was mad. Yeah, at first, no on. one knew what it was, lad. Nah, Everyone nah. the panic stations, it was, it, lad. It was mad. <laughs> but yeah, that must have been mad for you, even fighting as well, lads, because that must have felt like a sparring session. That's what it, exactly. I've compared every fight I've had behind closed doors to like a sparring session. You don't like get pumped up or no. not to to get in there and have a scrap, lad, and entertain people because there's no one there to entertain. Nah, it's weird. Yeah, that would be weird, that lad. Proper weird. The fighting wanna be. I reckon it'd be harder with no fans than it would playing football. Cause I feel like with when you're fighting, like I haven't obviously fight, but like I've, and I've done boxing years ago. Even when you've just not that many people there, and you can hear people shouting your name or say you hit someone with a decent shot, and, and then know. everyone goes away, yeah. and, thinking, and then you go for it, don't you? A bit sometimes. But like I, obviously, it's no, different you mean, no, it's it's the, it is the same. If it's though, just like if you fucking. But you, there was some of them games that like you make someone and then went on and like if there was a crowd there they're like Wah! yeah and there's no crowd lad it, you're just like oh yeah it's, it's just like a little sick isn't it that's a bit any I think anything in in any game you know yourself when Liverpool are playing and someone smashes someone everyone yeah. buzzing aren't they? especially if it's like Liverpool United or something like that so when we were in like decent games where we we're playing against someone who's sort of rounds our level and stuff because obviously the derbies are like crew and Stoke and that but yeah. crew in League One and Stoke and in the champ and um, we didn't really have a derby it was probably only Walsall and that like, we were shit against them across two games so it was probably shit for the fans as well as us aren't but, Walsall in League One now? nah League nah, Two they still in League Two yeah, I thought yeah. they were in one now for some reason nah they're, they're in League Two lad they've done us twice over last season um, and a bit of a say it's not a derby lad because it's like it's more like Birmingham, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's probably the closest team we go and play against. Yeah. So it was sort of a bit of a rivalry as well, especially because the gaffer left them and come to the Vale the season before that as well. Did he, yeah? Yeah, yeah. How did you end up going from Oldham to Thingo then? Did your contract expire and like your contract with Blackburn expired? No, so I... Mean, I with Blackpool, Blackburn. <laughs> sorry, about, sorry about. It was at... Um, that se- Blackpool went up that season, didn't he, to the champ? Yeah. So at that point, I was thinking like... Surely I'm just gonna go for a free year and sign somewhere because Blackpool have gone to the champ now. It'll be a big jump for me to go from playing in League Two and probably didn't play that well that season to go and play in the champ. Um, but my agent was saying to me, um, Blackpool are probably gonna take your option up, so they'll take me option up of an extra year. Yeah. But because they'll want a fee for you, so I was like, sounds. I was that. I didn't really know any. I was like, just let me know what's going on. And it was it was Vale and Tramier at the, were on me. I think I met Tramier on a Tuesday and then Vale on a Thursday, lads. And I just thought the whole sounding of Paul Vale when he was speaking to me, what he was showing me, what the plans are, like was good, lads. Like proper good the way. When I met Tramier, it was boss, lad. Like the setup there is good and stuff. But I just felt like, because I knew the coach there, Dos, he was 
he was the one who was speaking to me and stuff and saying like a new gaffer would come in on Monday, but it was obviously Mickey Mellon. And I was thinking like, he probably never seen me play. So it was always a doubt in my mind as much as he, he, he rang me and spoke to me and he was silent to me, to be honest. I was just thinking like, he might not take a liking to me the way I know Dorse likes me because he was at Blackpool with me. Yeah, He was with the U team doing the coaching there. So when obviously I went in the squad, like load like six or seven of us who weren't travelling, say if they had an away game in London or something, we'd we'd go in on a Saturday morning and train with the U team, but we'd sort of have like a different group. We wouldn't be with the whole of the U team. We'd be with like, like just the us. exceptional players. Yeah, a bit like, better. yeah, four or five of them who were decent lads, and he used his sessions were unbelievable. So I used to. That's when I was at uh, thinking I'll be boss going to here because I know how good his training is and that. But they're just a the sound and a poor veil and everything it was good lads. To be fair and. He, Obviously, just more keen on signing me. And my agent even said to me, like, they're not um, um and ah and about a fee. They're happy to just pay the fee. Trammy, you were a bit different, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I was just like, well, obviously, they want me more, don't they? And he was like, that's the feeling I'm getting. He said, but you make your own decision. I'm not going to push you into what decision you want to make. And I rang him about an hour later, lad, and just said, look, tell Vale, I'll sign, I'll go up. And I went up on a Thursday, lad, and sorted it with them. It's good, lad. Nice. And made up and went there, like. So... How much was the, the, the fee end up being? I don't know, you know, lad. That's what no, I mean. I've never... It's the same, like, Blackpool bought me from Warrington. I've never known how much it is, lad. <laughs> that's what I mean. That's the one thing you want to know. How much am I worth? Yeah, <laughs> that's honest, the one I thing you I might ask that, you know, when I go back. How much did I go for, eh? <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I'd be asking why I was you, Ben Defo. Oh, I'd be asking. The, I don't know about the first fee, and I, I don't know about the second one either. So, lad, lad, did you just mould into that team straight away then? Fit well, right in immediately? Well, nah, well, I. The group was good, lad. The group was sounds were all like quite a young group, do you know what I mean? There was a few experienced lads, but there was no like egos and nothing there. Not that there was any egos where else I've ever been. Yeah. But there was none of that. And like you do have some cl clubs that have little cliques, so you'll have like groups of stuff yeah. and like the, say the oldies, the youngies and different groups and that. But there's none of that a fail. So I was like, yeah, it's a it's a good setup, it's good here. But when I first went in there, lad. I was thinking I was going to be playing, obviously. And then um, I remember, again, we were doing, like, shape when we we went to, like, because we couldn't travel that season because of COVID. Yeah. We went to, like, somewhere in Leicester called Champneys or something. And we were doing, like, shape and that. And I was thinking, wow, you pe people don't think you're on it, but you're half on it. You, it's called, you get called the bomb squad. Yeah. Of, like, you'll do, like, the start and 11. And then the second team will be like that, and but it'll be like phases of play, so it'll be like centre half, I get it, give it to the left back, winger, centre mid, centre mid, winger, striker, back to wing, crossing goal, and then the next 11 will come on, but that's the bomb squad. Yeah. But they'll try and make it out like it's not, but sometimes they might blend it and like mix everyone in, but you sort of get to notice like who the players are, who will, yeah. you know who are going to be You know starting. the ones who are going to be starting, don't like you? The, I just always think like the, the captain at most clubs is going to be starting no matter what. Yeah. So if you're in his team, more than likely you're getting seen in that team. So I remember I was just playing in his position as like him, but the second team. So I was thinking, I'm obviously not going to be, he's not seeing me as a, he wants me to be playing like a tackle midfield, but he's playing there. So I'm not going to be getting in. So I was raging at first. And the lad I was rooming with, Proch, he was in the same position, but I don't, obviously, I don't know what his situation was in terms of how much he thought he was going to be playing in that. But he, he realistically, we didn't really get a chance at the start to like show anything because even in like the, the bounce games, I remember we we played a non league team like Stafford, who were in the same team league as Warrington when I used to play against them. And it was like me, Prox, Stoney, the keeper who ends up coming in as like the number one later on in the season. But at the start of the season, he was obviously seen as the number two. And I think it was the centre half, Adam Martin. And it was like us four lads playing with the U team on a Friday against Stafford away. And you were like, okay, just get on with the game. But then he was like trying to sweeten it up because all the other lads were playing the next day in a non-league, against the non-league team. But yeah. you're thinking like, that's your, that's your main team. Are we just a bomb squad here? And he was, he was going, no, yeah. Like, we didn't say that, but he was trying to sweeten up to say, you've got the weekend off, no, they're in tomorrow. Yeah. But I was in my head, I was thinking, I'd rather be playing with all the first team lads than playing with the youth team. And not have the whole weekend off. Yeah, lads, 100%. I'm not asked about having a weekend off. And, um, yeah, we weren't really around it. And then we were playing, like, other games and probably I weren't starting. And then the season started in the first game of the season. We played Northampton. 
and I think they got beat 1-0. Um, and then again, I think we had Sunderland in like the Carabao Cup on a Tuesday night and he said to me like, look, you'll definitely be playing in that. And it's done all right in that. Like I play well, but I was thinking he's just changing it because it's the cup. He's probably not too arsed about it. You know, when the league comes back, I'll be on the bench. But I think one of the lads got a knock in the Northampton game. I don't know, I'm sure it was the captain, um, Tom Conlon. So I end up playing against, what was Carlisle or Tramier or something like that at home. Might have been Tramier, you know. Mad that. The, the, the two teams at once. Yeah. Weird, isn't it? I'm sure it was Tramier. <laughs> Fate that, you know. And we played, and I played in that, and lads had done well. And to be fair, it probably, probably kept me position from that the... the that day, lad, almost yeah. like there was games obviously where he hadn't started me, but he brought me on at half time because, or yeah, at half time it was one game, and that would I end up doing well in the game. And I think that's when he's realized like I want him to be starting most weeks, but yeah, at the start, lads, at first I was thinking we weren't even in the rounds at me and Prox, and then Prox ends up coming in as well, probably our best striker last year, lad. Nice stuff, it's just weird, lad. Funny the way it was like usual rumours together as well, both worried about Proper getting weird, in, lad. And we were talking about it. being first team players. But he's had like injuries and stuff, so I don't know whether that's been... In the back of his mind, Yeah, and, he, and he's obviously had it, he's taught he's been brought in as just an option. Like he didn't know, I don't know what, how it would have worked for him, thinking he would have been in, getting told he would have been starting every week. Yeah. But lads, he come in and honest, he's a top player, lad. Like a big target lad but his first touch is good in that as well but he's just had bad luck with injuries and that he's always got knocks and niggles and that and he's not like dead old I think he's 30 lad so it's not like he's played 600 league games and he's, yeah. his body's done in he's he's still 30 but when he's on a lad he's a top top player and he ends up playing a massive part for us last year like a lad it must have been some because that lad I know you obviously played on other teams and that, but that's like your proper first season playing all the games. That's what it, it? That's what that I must think, have been yeah. some first season for you, that lad. That's that, that's I obviously Oldham was my first season of playing for professional football, but like it was just weird, lads. No fans felt like it weren't proper. There was still like bits of COVID around and that. Do you know what I mean? It was just dead weird season, and then. I've obviously signed for Vale before pre-season, so you've gone in and had a full pre-season with all the lads, yeah. got to know everyone, and then we've had a, a boss season. And to be fair, obviously the the manager and the lads have probably thought, yeah, well, maybe after a few games, well, we didn't start that well, lads. We were just like drawing nil 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 nil. We weren't scoring. We're like, oh, this is mad. Like we're just not not getting not much falling for us all. We weren't putting the ball in the network. But like defensively we were solid. So we knew once we started scoring, we'd beat teams and we, we went on a little run, lad, where we end up just scoring goals, but we weren't conceding many. So we'll win most games like one nil, two nil, one and two one and that. Like, and then there was like times in the season where we we'll concede a few goals, but we were scoring loads and might end up drawing or getting beat in the last minute and that. So like up and down season, but yeah, as you say, love first season couldn't have went any better for me. Like got a few awards of buzzing with, scored a few goals like thirteen or something. I think it was or twelve or thirteen. Lad, they uh, love you. I know, I, that's I the best thing about the day. it. Lad. I done a tweet the other day. Did you see it? Some kid put up a bar as um, you get getting uh, player of the year. The you know video I mean? thing. The, the videos. Goals. Yeah, I watched. It. I was like, belts that. I was like, and I quote tweeted and put my man's on the podcast if you want any questions, <laughs> yeah. lad. I had. Major poor veil in me in me tweets that it was sick. They were like, yes, he knows the veil. <laughs> yeah. all that. Up the veil. <laughs> lad, the, uh, lads, all people sending me the pictures. With you, me. lad. <laughs> oh, lad, lad, know what? I'll have to send. I'll have to send then Jacob that lad to source because someone on Twitter done a made, done a picture of Ben with my ear do on it, lad. It was hilarious, yeah, lad. I've it had a few lad. people send me that. It was a good Photoshop, though. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It was a good Photoshop. It's not as if like it was bad and it looked stupid, lad. It looked like it was on your head. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, wow, that's spooky, that. <laughs> it's mad, lads. Nah, but... Yeah, dude, that's, a best, that's a good thing as well, but obviously I'm not saying it'd be diff. When you're doing well, like people will be behind you, so you always need people behind you when you're not doing yeah. well as well. Do you know what I mean? That's why, like... It's 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 tough sometimes for people to like they say oh lad you need to go on like get back on Twitter that everyone loves you on Twitter and then I'm like I didn't come off Twitter because like I didn't want to speak I just I just couldn't be arsed with Twitter. I know anymore. I tried to tag it in that the other day I was like oh you mustn't have it. Yeah, well to be honest I was I was debating on making another one anyway and just getting back on it. But like it's the same with me and me Instagram's private lad it's like not on private because I don't I, I don't want like. 
I might go on private one day, do you know what I mean? But I've never thought of going on private so everyone can just see me stuff and you know, be messaging me and I don't want to be like, I'm getting like quite a lot of messages through. I don't want to start blanking people and looking like I'm a little stubborn knob or something like that. But lad, that's I went through that phase, lad, to be honest. I went through a phase where I'd message everyone back. Lad, you get that many messages, you can't. Yeah. It's going to happen with you, gone, lad. Like, you've gone that, that though, lad. Like even like the lad, me mate that footy lad, Smudge, he messaged me and he was like, do you know, you know, bad he sent this? And he was like, surely not. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. And he's like, <laughs> he, lo- he watches, he proper likes the UFC and he, was, he buzzes off you, lad. Like your interviews and the fights and that. So he oh, loves all that, lad. lad. <laughs> he sent me as soon as he seen it on Twitter. I said, I'll give it a little mention on the podcast. There you go. What was it, Smudge? Smudge, there you yeah. go, Smudge, lad. Hey, you've <laughs> smashed it, fella. You've had a mention on Chat and Pony now. Hey, <laughs> you've smashed it. But obviously, lad, we need to talk about Wembley. Yeah. Like, it's mad because just being, I was watching Liverpool, lad, against Chelsea in a Carabao, lad, a few, bad, what, a month or two before. And at that time, we were in the position of going up automatic. Yeah. So I was just thinking, we'll go up automatic and then I'll be back at Wembley watching the FA Cup yeah. for Liverpool again. And, the back end of the seat, well, the last few games, lad, we just had a little dip off and we, we end up dropping loads of points. We were like, look, just, a, we nearly, well, we dropped out the playoffs, but we were like, teams were losing and winning yeah. and we were just, it was just changing loads, loads of us. We had like a point between like four or five teams. So we were just thinking, we had exited the last game of the season, lads, which was a tough game because they went up automatic, but they probably didn't think they would have been in a position to be able to win the league because Forrest Green were about, 20 points clear lads at one point and then they just end up having a little dip off after they probably won the league losing a few games um, after they got promoted sorry and then Exeter caught them up so on the last game of the season lad if Exeter beat us they would have won, the won the league oh lads not as if it's like a gimme game so is it and promoted? we knew it would be a tough game because we played Exeter a few weeks before and it was just both of us cancelling each other out solid game but I sort of got the feeling throughout the game when I was speaking to a few of the lads when they were playing. I was thinking, these aren't asked here about winning the yeah, league. they're already promoted. They they're already, and we scored, not early, but we scored probably 20, 25 minutes into the first half, 1-0. And like, we were defended so well. We played well that day. It was fucking roasting. And um, I just got the feeling that they, they weren't asked. A few, yeah, a few of them saying, no, oh, just blow up and that. And I was thinking, I'm fucking mad this. You just can win the league. But we were sorted in the day saying... Um, it's laughing anyway, no matter what. You should going won, up. You should have won the league, lad, because we were just blagging them, saying, Manfield are beating for a screen, so you should have won the league. <laughs> Obviously, they were probably getting told different, but <laughs> at half time, lads, our gaffers, mad, our gaffer was like, make sure when you're on there, just say, go over to them and go, hey, Manfield are winning 2 0 on that there. Because Manfield was winning, I'm sure they were winning, I don't know, maybe 1 0 or something. And I think it ended up, I don't know whether they end up drawing and for a screen won it by a point or something like that. Yeah. And I was saying Manfield are winning, lad. So you're just flying like loads were saying little stuff like that. If you were to draw, would you just have ended up in the playoffs now? I don't know whether we would have on goal difference, lad, because I'm sure every other team won. Oh, that's heavy, that. Had goal proper, difference as well. We went from like literally being five points clear in thirds because the top three go up in League yeah. Two, five points clear, to nearly dropping out the playoffs. Like as, as good as a season as it would have been for myself personally, it would have been an absolute killer. Yeah, it would have put a damper on the whole season. Hundred percent, lads. Like put a even when, like you know, you come out after the games and that, like I have to say, we lost that home and there might be like three or four fans outside, and you just end up chatting to them. Some of them would be like positive and be like, "Look, it's a because the it's different to what they probably had other seasons where they might have been battling relegation and whatever." He was like. This season's a big positive. Look where we're coming at. And I'm just, I look at it and just, I was saying, like, it's not though, if we don't get playoffs, it's not a good season. They're like, oh, long you... seasons, that 46 games, in it? Had we, we, even more, like, if you play, and then if you cup, play the playoffs, it's another three as yeah, well, innit? And like, then obviously, if you go on the, through in the, ca- the Carlin like Cup and the, the Carabao Cup lads. and the FA like Cup. It's, it's, it's a lot of games, and we play most Saturday, Tuesdays, lads. It's a lot of Saturday, Tuesday games. It's probably like, I don't know whether it's the start of the season, you don't you play a few or something and then you have like a period where you don't play that many and then it's just Saturday, Tuesday. I know COVID it didn't in the December time. Yeah. So we missed a few games then. So we played end of the season every Saturday, Tuesday, lads. Oh, that would have been heavy. That lad, was 180 heavy. minutes constantly. And in them leagues, you have the Johnston's paint trophy as well, don't you? Well, it's called the Papa John's now. Oh, yes, the Papa John's. Yeah, so yeah. I only know that because of footy manager, lad. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason I know that, lad. Not going to lie. It, it's if that sometimes, though, it'll be like 
lad, lads won't always play in it. Who say you've played four games on the bounce? Yeah, four you won't play in that. You'll have a rest. You'll have like lads who probably haven't got as much game time, like playing in them games to get the legs going and stuff. Yeah, but it's not like he's probably just fucking it off. You know what I mean? He's still putting a strong team out because the lads who aren't playing it just easily is good enough to be playing yeah. in the team lab but he just probably doesn't want to load the players too much and we had loads of injuries lads like I in December time lad, I was playing up front because we had no oh, strikers yeah. lads we had no strikers lads doesn't surprise me in them lower leagues though I could just play that many games lad. yeah play that many games you're getting injuries get injured, lads lad. 100% it's like us when training camp lad we train that hard for 8 weeks I don't think any UFC fighter goes into a fight without a niggle. No, defo. I say that about going into a game. Like you couldn't. No, there's no way anyone in the world who plays in any sport is going into what they do 100. percent Yeah. Because you're training so intense. Like that your body can't be 100 percent to get no in there way. because you've trained that hard leading up to but it. You, but your adrenaline will get you through them niggles yeah, unless it obviously have. it's it's a bad bad one. Like do you know what I mean? Like I always, you know what I was watching them UFC things like that. Um, on that is Embedded it Cam, Kamzat is it yeah that yeah, yeah. Lad, it, I just, match Jimmy Changa. just watch him all day you know lad he has me in stitches yeah he's that, a nutter lad. lad he overtrains lad to be honest he's just weird he's isn't o- it, lad, he overtrains lad he's, he's mad <laughs> he's he mad he's a nutter yeah lad but you just romped Wembley yeah lad they absolutely <sighs> romped him they weren't great they weren't we, we played them earlier in the season lad at their place and we didn't have loads of injuries. We might have had like one or two out of the time, and they had, they had a few injuries, but they had lads coming back yeah. from the injury, so they were sort of like getting strong, but they weren't at full strength. And like Mansfield are always a decent team; yeah. like they've got a good budget, and they had an experienced manager at the time. Well, he's still there now, and we were thinking, um, be good time to play these lad. We got absolutely battered <laughs> for ninety minutes, though. They weren't like <laughs> we're in a period in the game where. We were the better team. Yeah. It was 90 minutes we got battered, but in the first half, lad, our skipper, Tom Conlon, just put a ball top corner on the free kick, 1 0 up. We were thinking, ah, oh, we'll just hold on to this now. And second half, we just got pummeled, lads, and they end up scoring, lad. And we thought we we're going to lose this, but we drew that then. And then we played them at our place, lad, later on in the season. And we were well the better team. We ran all over them. But you end up drawing again or something? No, we beat oh, we them. Beat them, yeah. beat them three. Well, it was one one lad until late on, and a young lad come on for us. He, he was on loan, Kean. He ended up scoring two lads. We ended up winning three one. It must have been like the last ten minutes he scored two. So nice. it was just and, Super and that, there. that was the time where it was like putting us into I don't know whether it was automatics or something like in a good position and yeah. that to go up or it was something to do with the playoffs. But that was like that was that was a heavy win against them because the good lads they got very good players. How, how many I was thinking as well how many people were in Wembley that day <sighs> couldn't tell no, you it's not going to be like the full stadium nah, it's not, the it's Champions like, League final it was the same yeah, day in that the way, top it? tier when when open open yeah so it was just like the still mid, about 50 mid and lower I reckon it? it was probably about yeah, 50,000 50, so it was it was boss yeah, obviously lads some was, feeling that lad. it was I wouldn't have wanted felt their feeling like after losing because as I say they were, they were good in the season but that day they were, they were poor lad like I think we've seen the team and just thought we can sort of get at the easier. Yeah. Like, you scored the opener, bit. didn't you? Nah, Keane scored the opener. Scored, yeah, and I knew you scored, but I thought you scored nah, the first one. I didn't score, lads. I edited one and I come off the bar and then the, our players oh, scored. Lad, I've seen that highlight. Like, that's why I think you scored. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking joke, I that. was gutted, lads. Honestly, it was a being unreal lap, but we battered them that day, lads. Like, they had a, maybe a period at the start of the game where like our defenders left the ball their players ran in it to edit it just I think I bounced off the keeper should have scored to be honest free header lads on rad on the six yard line and then I think we had one of our lads cleared one off the line I think that was at 1-0 or maybe 2-0 so we had, they had like little periods where yeah. but they end up going down to 10 men lad in the first half first oh yeah I read about that actually he just wiped one of our players out after getting a, like in it there was VAR that day as well so you have to be careful what you're doing because yeah. if you've done anything in the box, like in lad in League Two, lad, I swear, when you're in that box, you're, getting dragged to the floor. you're just getting it choked out in that. You can't <laughs> people being naked choking lad, that like that. You can't the move, lads. Like one of our lad, that kid Smudger was telling you about before, lad, he's just so strong, lad. Once he grabs you, you cannot move, lads. But he's he's probably my height, lads. Yeah. He's not like big stocky, lad. He's just got weird strength and 
when he's in the box, lad, he's just grabbing people and they're not moving. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's the same with me. I'm going to move to try and edit a ball, lad. And just got big, massive got sense, of, sense of arch just grabbing you. And you're, you're trying to shout the ref to say, like, look, but by the time he's let go, you lad, the ball's gone over your head and yeah. stuff. But with Wembley, they couldn't do that. So I think their sense of arch obviously, smudges, probably being, he pinches and grabs whatever. I, <laughs> lad, I think, I've heard of plenty of Prem players doing that, though, uh, and just messing it's, about, just it's like, the worst squeezing thing ever, lad. That. Like, it's horrible. He does it sometimes, like in training. Like, get off me, lad, with <laughs> training. Like, he's just mad. <laughs> You're the sound, you smudge. Lad, he's funny, and he'll just like laugh, and he's got a big gaff in his teeth, you know what I mean? And people will just be like, saying, get your teeth off, and he's just laughing in the face, obviously, <laughs> winding him up and that. And he's just not arsed, lad. So he's obviously been probably pinching him and grabbing him. And that kid like, just grabbed him by the throat and threw him or hit him in the face and he's just fell to the floor. Got a yellow and then five, ten minutes later, lad, our striker's got the ball like on the half turn and just knocked it past him and he's just wiped him out. Second yellow, Second lad. Second yellow. Wembley, lad. Talk Nothing about offence that's happening. Like, it's just, just so stupid. As you say there, though, it just shows the difference from all the footies because as we say, amateur, people are just getting sad, swiped. Oh, a million percent. Everywhere. That wouldn't even be in a yellow. League two, <laughs> yeah. league one. In the box, you get them grappled. Yeah, probably. Them, you can't touch anyone. No, you can't, lad. You know what I mean? Champions League, the same. Can't touch anyone. No. That, it is It is going bad in terms of, like, it's a contact sport, lad. You, oh, it's not anymore, lad. Some, of, no it, contact some sport of it now. should be a bit, like, lenient. I do get it. In the box, it is annoying, especially with the balls coming to you and you're getting pulled to the floor. And the, like, I think they should be penned every time, whenever, yeah. when everyone's, especially, you know, they've just got oldie in the, ball, the corners that way and he's facing there. Like, that's what it's like sometimes. Like, and he's not even looking at the ball, he's just got out. I got watched Northampton, lad, and Mansfield in the semi playoff, like on the telly. And I swear, I was watching it on the telly and I could just see the Northampton centre half or the Mansfield centre half just getting older than lad. And, not, and like looking the opposite way from the ball and just like marching them off the pitch and yeah. like pulling them down and I'm thinking, how are they not getting given like the, the stone ball pens last? <laughs> we didn't get one pen last season, us not one single pen. In not a single season. penalty in 46 games. Lads, not one. It was even more like that. Imagine, so, like, like it, not even in any of the cup competitions, just never had a single get, pen. Other than the pen shootout, we didn't get one single penalty last year. That's lad. spicy, that lad. I think with the only team lad, that's happened to. Like, I don't That's got to be a record. That of a team's gone, never had a penalty all never season. That has to be a record, lad. Swear. Sick. But new division next season, lad. Yeah, lad. Can't wait for that, you know. Swear. Just we're back in Nick. We're back in Monday, lad. Um, so it'll be decent. Be decent to get, get going. Like the season starts a bit early this year, doesn't it, as well? Yeah, because of the World Cup. And we've had a shorter time off because of the, the playoffs. The playoffs yeah, he's had a few weeks, month. yeah. Because as we were saying, it was the same day as the Champions League final, wasn't mm -hmm. it? So what was was that like the first of June or something this year or twenty eighth of May or something like something that? Something like that. It? it was the, it was the back last end weekend of May, of May start wasn't it? of June, yeah. yeah. It was, it was a bit of, but next season's gonna be mad, lad. The World Cup in between and that. That's just Are you just having a break there or nah, I don't nah. think we do. I think the champ and the Prem do. Yeah. There'll be do. team there might be teams maybe in League One, you know, like the higher up shit like your chef weds and stuff like that, where they might have but like I don't know it. Is You're there, right there, some of them might have any, like a few Welsh any, players or something who are going Scotland's and that. Scotland's in it, no? No, they got beat by Ukraine, didn't they? What about Ireland or any of them? Ireland no, ones, Ireland are in it, but what's it called? Uh, Wales. 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 Wales are in it. So unless so the I mean. Welsh, but I, to be fair, Wales are decent. Also, a lot of their players are playing like champ and that, do you yeah. know what I mean? They might have a few, but I think it's like if you'd only have, say, one player, I don't think it'll get like swerved. Yeah. It'll be like... Wouldn't surprise me if, like, I know Algeria are a good team now, but, like, they had players playing in League One, they stuff might like be. that. Like, they might, you know I mean? you'll be surprised. Like, some people will just get called up to, like, teams and that that yeah. you probably won't know about. But I don't think you'll get many teams getting called off in our league. I'm sure I've asked that question, you know. Seeing it, like, yeah, I was thinking, like, lad, you've played that many games, you can't have that big break. Nah, like, I looked at the fixtures that. the other day. When I looked at the, like, obviously, Liverpool fixtures, I went, what? We played two games in November and two games in December. I looked yeah. at it and was like, this can't be right. And then went, oh my God, this stupid World Cup in Qatar. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't care about international football. Yeah. I just don't care about it. It just doesn't bother me. That's how low, that's how Liverpool is, lad. That's how Liverpool is, lad. I don't care about international football, lad. Yeah. And if England gets to the final, I'll cheer the other team on. <laughs> no, you can't do that, Oh, lad. I do, lad. <laughs> do you, I want yeah. Italy to win in that Euro <laughs> final, mate. Have you yeah. not seen that video of me in 54? No. Nah. We watched it in 54, lad, and I started celebrating when he missed the pen, the England player. <laughs> yeah. I remember who it was. It mean Saka I just turned to Jerry and just went, lad, here's that one. Because <laughs> me and him had a bet. You know what I mean? 
Give that one a lad. <laughs> you fucking rats, I'm made up. You know what I mean? I got pure grief for it. Like, yeah, you it's going. a lad. Any other sport, though, I want England to win. Yeah, yeah. Like the rugby, anything like that. Any English fighters, I always want them to win, lad. Just the fussy team, lad. I just can't cope with them chatting, all them fans screaming horrible shit about scousers all year. Yeah, I can't And then they want us to stand arm in arm with them, lad. Yeah. It doesn't work for me like that, lad. Nah. Yeah. Call us murderers and bin dippers all year, lad, and talk about the 97 and that. I will not be standing with you to watch a black team play together who aren't yeah. even a proper team. Well, at least it, that's what I'm saying. At least you've got like a reason for it. Like some people will just jump on a bandwagon and be like, oh, I'm not too bad. It's like, what is your reason? Yeah, like, I'm you're not right one there. of them where I'll have an England shirt on in the pub watching it, but I will watch England and be like, want them to win. But it's like it's different for you as well because we at... you are an actual player, lad. You'd know what it's like to be in that position to get asked to play for England. You'd want yeah, to do it. Yeah, be unreal, lad. You know what like, I mean? It'd be, be boss for you, lad. But like, it's different for me. I don't look at it the same way as you. It's the sh- you know when we we were at for me, lad. If you're a scout and you support England, you're an Everton fan. <laughs> you're an Everton fan <laughs> because you're you've got nothing going on in your club that's interesting enough. You have to support another team. It's like most people who support England are like Grimsby. Crew, South End, <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like Mansfield, Forest Green, they're like fans from like League Two, League One, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you mean. Because like... we don't get to travel with their own team. Yeah. Where we get to go to Europe every week, lad. Yeah. So like Everton fans then. Exactly, yeah. Everton fans, lad. Nah, like, I was about I, to say I, West Ham fans, but they're staunch fans, lad, who support their own team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I get I get the people's reasons, but like I, I'd, I'd support England, but it's the same like when we were at, at Wembley, like the national anthem come on and they're like, ah, you won't be singing that, will you? And I'm like, I won't, it's not like I'm not singing it because I, I, I don't like, the, I like the Queen, lads. I don't have a, I don't, don't ever have say a, that in front of me again. I don't lads. have a problem with it, lads. I like the Queen. <laughs> Turn it in, lads. I don't have a problem, lads. Like, I would never sing that song ever in my life. No, I wouldn't, but like, it's, it's, it's not like a, I know what it, you I mean. I know what you mean there. You, you don't not like the Queen, you don't like her. Yeah, she's I'm just, just indifferent just a to you. Yeah, to me, I lads. don't like her personally, me, like. <laughs> yeah. I really don't like her. You've just got problems, lad. Yeah, you? I'm bad. As I say, I'm a bit mental in the head, me, lad. I'm, <laughs> yeah, not, I'm, not, all, I'm not all there in the head, lad, to be honest. And I just don't like her, lad. Yeah, that's fair enough. You, Especially say, when you're paying 12 million quid for your non son to not go to jail. <laughs> yeah, he's a non son. Taxpayers' money. Proper you know. nonce. Dirty bastards. Yeah, but I, that's the bomb, bad bomb for me. We, like. We'll end it on that anyway. That's a belt I want to end it on. But, um, lad, tell everyone where to find... So I was going to say, your, your social media's a private, aren't they? You haven't yeah. even got Twitter. I'll, but I'll, I'll, I might make one just for Paddy. <laughs> <laughs> might make a Twitter for might him. Get a Twitter and an Insta made, lad. Like, you no, know what you should do, though? You should just make a public one. I know, Keep lad. your private one. I'll make just make me Twitter and just make me normal one. Probably on private or something, but... I was, I nah, was, the way you don't want people to see all pictures and that, like family and shit like that, yeah. you should just make a make a public one, lad, a footy one. Yeah. You know what I mean? By the way, as well, when I met your kid the other week, lad, I looked at him and went... Like a bigger version of like you, like a bigger version of you, <laughs> yeah. lad. I looked at him and then I, I kept looking over at him and then looking away and then he come over to me and went, oh, yeah, you know our kid? And when Ben I went, oh, my God, lad, you and Ben are just spitting into each other. Lad, I just went, that's scary. It's weird, lad, he is just a bigger version of yeah, you. Yeah, he loves, the, he loves the fussy, lad. He's, he's there most weeks. Like. Yeah, he was saying he was good at the Champions League final. It was the same day because he knows everyone would have went to watch you. Yeah, But yeah. because it was the same day, everyone was in Paris. That's what I'm saying. And like I, I think we all wish now that we would have went and watched yeah, you instead, lad, 100%. because that Paris was like the page. But um, is there any sponsors that you want to shout out, lad, or any nah. thank yous you want to give to anyone? Everyone support me, lads, innit? <laughs> innit? Everyone support, support you, everything. lad. Everything. And everyone who's helped me work hard, so, nah, nothing really. Kusty, well, thank you very much for coming on, lad. I no appreciate worries, it. No worries, No worries. That's the end of episode 37. As always, see you next week.